Hey, so here we are for the second installment of this walkthrough of history. So we're moving into the medieval period, but something's common in both the ancient and medieval periods, and really almost everything until you get to the Napoleonic bath. There are a few that are starting to show up, but other, other, yeah, really until you hit the Napoleonic period, I'd say, where there's a total lack, and this is perhaps the subject of a completely different discussion on scopes of games, but there's this total lack of operational scale, right? You go, you have the tactical scale where you're looking at a single battle and a battle of, uh, of such small proportion, either usually running in important battles, but running from the one large army faces another size. Not a lot of man-to-man -man or, or, or small-scale uh, actions here. And then this jump to a strategic scale where you're probably actually controlling production and such within the game. So let's look at the medieval period, which it's really a humongous span of time. And again, I have uh, some more of the great battles of history stuff, I think, hits this, and some of the newer stuff like Men of Iron and Infidel, which we'll touch in a moment. Age of Renaissance, this is definitely starts in that Dark Ages period here, right? Uh, it actually begins soon after the fall of, of Rome. And it's actually an economic game, rather than uh, purely, you know, it, it's not at all a military game, although it plays as though it's a civilization or, or military type game with its purchasing of, of abilities uh, and, and advances in, 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 in society rather than, it, it's kind of an odd feel to a game because you're actually putting merchants on the board supposedly, but it really doesn't feel like that. It feels like you're fighting. Um, more from the art of siege, here we have Acre and Constantinople. Uh, Constantinople is really almost the Renaissance era here. Uh, I, I've taken it as my marking point of where the Renaissance begins and, and the medieval era ends because it really was this shocking element to the world. But at this point, you know, Italy is already deep in its Renaissance. So, uh, well one of its renaissances, right? Because throughout the medieval period you have several different renaissances going on and one of them took hold and kept going. Anyway, Siege of Acre, much much better than the Siege of Tyre. Uh, nice little uh, mining operations and, and counter mining and possibility of sallies and all kind of that. Really an interesting little situation there uh, that I enjoyed. Uh, Constantinople got a lot of bad press. I thought it was actually fairly well done. I've just gotten the naval rules to it, which means maybe I'll make some counters and play that out. Uh, here's what Constantinople got a kind of crappy rating for me. Hmm. Or no, Acre got a crappy rating. Interesting. I thought it was a better game than I've got it right in. Constantinople I found a lot more fun though. Okay, Crusades. Now, I've been clipping counters for Onward Christian Soldiers, which is a recent purchase that I made. Uh, both it and Crusades are bird games. Crusades is a really interesting game. Holds uh, seven or eight players. Seven is probably optimal uh, for the first Crusade, and then it does the third Crusade, which is a two-player game. It has this really flawed uh, attrition and movement system. Now, that attrition system gets moved to Onward Christian Soldiers and actually to the Ancient World Games. Uh, and I've got an order on the Rise of the Roman Republic, which is another one of them. I don't think any more of that series is being built, which is sad because it looks really exciting to me. I'm going to see how they play out. Uh, I'm hoping they play out a little better than Crusades. I've always liked Crusades, though. I gave it a 7. Never seen anyone give it... Nobody's given it a better rating on my list. Um, some people have given it very bad ratings, but they were non-war gamers playing this system. Empires of the Middle Ages. I did this on video. This is... Oh, I wanted this game so badly when it came out, and I loved it so much for so many years. It's not as exciting to me now as it used to be. But it's this 
really wonderfully abstracted uh, situation where you know you're ruling these major countries, but very random and very, very futile. It's the futile age, not the feudal age. Um, the thing that bothered me about it, I wanted it to be combined with the uh, Games Workshop game, Blood Royale. And maybe instead fleshed out with Popes and Princes, which was designed, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, uh, I want to say Steve Tihor, who ended up doing um, an online version of it. I may be mistaken there, but it was definitely designed out of some of those SPI guys. Um, I wanted that extra detail in Empires of the Middle Ages. I would have loved to have seen it. The uh, closest I've seen to getting that right was Crusader Kings by Paradox, computer game. And, oh, speaking of computer games, Empires of the Middle Ages was... Mm, I can't remember the name. There was an old SSI game that was almost entirely lifting this. And a little bit more detail, a little bit more interesting. Unfortunately, the graphics are so hard to cope with. Even in their era, it was tough to deal with these blocks. <laughs> you know? And the... They didn't uh, even use the graphical capabilities of that period uh, to their full extent. Hastings 1066, this was a TSR uh, S&T game. I actually really liked this. It had some neat little factors in it. Ah, it's a bird game, no wonder. Um, it had some neat little factors in it where you picked command chits uh, to activate your units. Uh, not chip pull, but you actually selected chits to give each of the wings specific commands, and I, I think you may have had to roll for them. I'm going to have to do a video on that to really have a feel for it. The uh, Infidel and Men of Iron from GMT, these are really nice little games. Um, almost a simplified Great Battles of History. Uh, I would love to have seen the medieval stuff being done with a full GBOH uh, treatment, but Kingmaker. Classic, right? Um, Kingmaker never plays out as well as I remember it being. <sighs> even, uh, even in the late 80s, I remember coming back to this game and setting it up and playing it and feeling like it was this tedious, long-winded exercise in not a great deal of fun with everybody kind of sitting and their strongholds waiting for bad events to happen that would cause, you know, a royal heir that they needed to hunt down to get out of the way. This is my last video. Uh, Legend of Robin Hood. This goes for a, a lot of money. Old Avalon Hill. Tiny little box game. Interesting game. The rules are a pain in the butt, though. Uh, it's a good game once you get through the actual coping with the rules. Uh, they're far too obtuse for my taste there. Uh, that's Men of Iron. And out of the two, Men of Iron and Infidel, Infidel's probably more balanced and interesting, but as I mentioned um, over on CSW Social, the Men of Iron rules... So Infidel is mainly ca has a lot of cav in it, whereas Men of Iron usually has, well, always has one side with a strong infantry component. So Men of Iron is kind of interesting for the simple fact that it's more accessible. When you start getting those swirling tactical cav battles, they hurt my head a lot. Uh, they're interesting, there's no question, but maybe they're too fluid for my taste. Middle C, this is another uh, Fantasy Games Unlimited system, or game, um, almost diplomacy-like, plotic movement, uh, but it has economics and some additional features on top of it to make it more than just, uh, you know, cutting deals and positioning the strongest force. There's also some randomness in the combat, etc. Samurai, this is Kingmaker moved to Japan, and this is sadder to me than Kingmaker. It may be a more interesting game, actually, but because it doesn't have the cards, Kingmaker's cards made it so much more exciting, and that's why some of the new games are so much better, I think, is just the component aspect of having cards 
Samurai uses chits. And you'll see the same thing when you look at uh, Empires of the Middle Ages in comparison with Sword of the Star, Sword and the Stars. Sword and the Stars was nowhere near as interesting a game because they didn't invest as much in the cards. The event cards, they're gone, they're replaced by chits. Well, Samurai, all, all the character cards and, and all the troops and everything have been reduced to just chits. There gives them the ability to put a lot of them in there. But it's just not as much fun to play with chips. Um, Susie Rain, this is a Tim Jim game. I like Tim Jim games for whatever re weird reason. This one's always been a disappointment to me. It's a fine card game and everything, but Tim Jim seems to kind of be all over the place in terms of what they produced. Family games, essentially like fast food franchise, which are fantastic. Uh, things like 2038, that's an XX game in space. Uh, and on, uh, you've got Throne World and, and Time Agent, which are interesting little games w with these neat concepts behind them. I thought Susie Rain would be a lot more fun than it is for me. I think it's a fine game as a card game, but it comes out to being sort of like an Illuminati type game when you play it out. And Warriors of God, which is far too much fun for what it is. I really enjoy playing this sucker, but it has almost no historical value from my point of view. It's just not detailed enough to give you a good historical view of what's going on. It's kind of like playing Britannia um, in the Hundred Years' War or uh, what the slightly earlier period. Um, okay, let's go on to the Renaissance era. Now, this is an era that I really love in part because that whole, you're, you're seeing such a change in the flavor of combat. And I guess you see this kind of in the medieval period, but I just don't have as much detailed looking into the changes in tactics, etc., over the medieval period as has been sort of granted because of some key events that are a lot better understood during the Renaissance period. I would love to see that kind of detail, and, and the history just may not be there, that kind of detailed examination of, say, the changes in the medieval period. You see the attempts with Men of Iron, but that's really showing the beginning of this Renaissance period, as it were. Um, but maybe, maybe we're beginning to see some more exploration of that. So starting with that, another Tim Jim game, Age of Exploration. I want to like this. I want to give this another shot. I did a video for it. And it flopped completely, uh, my playing of it. It just was not, it's, the rules are terrible on this. This has to be one of the most poorly written rules sets that I've seen for what's well, really not that complex a game, but it's, Tim Jim has this uh, idea of, oh, let's get you right into playing right away. So you never really get a view of, of the game. Um, Armada, the old SPI game, I like this a lot. It covers the economic aspects as well as, at a very high level, the military aspects of uh, not just the Spanish Armada, but what's going on in the Dutch Revolt and, and pulling the troops up, and even the, the French uh, Civil War is going on at the same time. Conquistador, this is a game that I loved in its time, but I've probably left it behind largely because of another game in this era, which is uh, Europa Universalis. It covers a broad span, as does Conquistador, really. Conquistador takes you through a large period of time, through the exploration of the New World. Speaking of which, I have New World, which is sort of a lighter version of this era as well. I liked it. Uh, some of my friends didn't like it because it's a little too abstract there. I felt like that abstraction is about equivalent to what Conquistador provides. Conquistador provides more detail, but not any better history, as it were. And New World gave the option for ran for exploration, which Conquistador doesn't really give. For a game that's about exploring the New World and setting up colonies there, it kind of falls on its face. Age of Exploration has the right concept there in a lot of ways but you don't have the colonization aspect. Conquistador gives you the colonization aspect. Endeavor. <sighs> yeah. Endeavor is a Z-Man game. I played it once recently. <laughs> I've just
just picked it up. It's not really good on my head because it's been over a year since I played it, I think. This is uh, kind of a Euro game, well, definitely a Euro game, where your exploitation of the world trading militarily, etc. It's all very abstract and kind of an interesting game for that way. I'd compare that to some of the others that we'll get to in a moment. Okay, so here's the big one for me, Europa Universalis. This is sort of the catch-all. It covers everything from the exploration and conquest of the New World, uh, along with all the European occurrences happening at the same time, based on this event system, completely event-driven, very, very flawed as written, uh, but still the scope, uh, the, the, the audacity of the design. I would love to have designed this, but could never have done it because I wouldn't have settled on the, okay, let's go with these fixed events. I would want to do something more generic, like Empires of the Middle Ages, and this has kind of superseded most of those kind of games for me because, at least it did for a while, I haven't played in a long time, and yes, I'm going to get to it. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I'm doing total uh, the uh, Axis Empires. Uh, Granada, Avalanche Press, really disappointing. Look at the video if you want to see why. Just not an interesting game to me. Oh, yes, the uh, Musket Pike series. I've only played a couple of these, Gustavus Adolphus the Great, and uh, another one for the Great Northern War. It's the name of. Nothing gained but glory. Uh, Gustavus Adolphus the Great convinced me I want to play this. I want this entire series. Um, I've got to compare this to something like Brightonfield. This is the great battles of history, what, what it would be over in um, this Renaissance period, that level of detail and exploration. I also have Lion of the North from Great Battles of History, which I want to look at to compare to those. Okay, let's look. Heads of State, Z-Man Games, uh, you know, fun little abstract Euro game played on the European situation, kind of, of that time, sort of. Uh, here I stand, GMT, I love this game. You want to see the videos of this, uh, if not mine, because you can't stand me, someone else's. Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with this, this is just a brilliant game. I also have A Mighty Fortress, which actually I bought this because I loved the concept of A Mighty Fortress. I didn't ever get to play it. I got the new copy of it, and I'm looking forward to giving that a shot. I don't think I can stand against Here I Stand because I've looked at the rules for A Mighty Fortress long, long ago. wanted to play it so badly. Never got to do it. Uh, Multi-Man Publishing, King Philip's War. Interesting system, but... Uh, I didn't really get that much enjoyment out of actually playing it. Lords of the Renaissance. This is Lords of Sierra Madre. It translated over to uh, early Renaissance period and largely focused on the European situation, building up trade routes, stuff like that. So I think it's an improved game over the original Lords of Sierra Madre. The only problem with this is the components are really, really cruddy. Uh, tiny little hand-cut cards. You've got to use pennies to mark instead of money. Very, very difficult to manipulate on there. Uh, the components are the reason that I haven't brought this out, broken it out earlier. Uh, nothing Game But Glory. This is Musket and Pike over on uh, the Scanian Wars. And this is... Uh, a slightly different situation, rougher terrain, lighter units fighting. Uh, I'm more happy with, you know, the, the grand scale of the, the more important European battles, at least important to those who aren't in, you know, Denmark and Sweden. Machiavelli, the old Avalon Hill game. This is diplomacy, but kind of bulked out a little bit with some random stuff, plague, stuff like that some economics in there to a little bit more detail. Even harder to get a complete victory in than diplomacy, I'd say. Interesting game, though. Uh, a most dangerous time. This is uh, the feudal uh, Japanese under uh, Nobunaga uh, period. And 
felt a little light for my taste. Uh, I had some fun though with it and ended up making some expanded ideas for roles because of the situation I was in. Revolution by Phalanx. This is a pure strategy game, but this is a, a, tr a Tresham mod design. Now, everything Tresham does is just so brilliant, and this is almost uh, a civilization style of brilliance. I'm surprised this game has not gotten any more buzz than it has. The problem is it's a little long for today's gamer, I think. I really, really enjoyed it and had a lot of fun with it, and I'm looking forward to playing it some more. Uh -huh. Great Battles of History again to Samurai. This was my first experience with Great Battles of History. It convinced me to buy pretty much the whole system. And playing SPQR, I can't say I'm the least disappointed with it. Okay, Decision Games, 30 Years of War. I did not like this. It felt way too abstracted uh, for my taste. And maybe the artwork didn't help either. Um, I don't know. The, uh, the 30 Years Quad by SPI. Now, this I really like. It's not Musket and Pike. It's not that level of detail. But I've actually bought, uh, put an order in on, on the reprint of this. And I want to get... Uh, a look at some of those other battles. All I have is Breitenfeld from it. I did a video on that. I really enjoy it. Uh, GMT is 30 Years War, Europe in Agony. Played this solitaire with a video as well as opposed against my current wife. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, it captures kind of the ambling spirit, ram uh, wandering around, pillaging stuff. And not a lot of, it doesn't have the kind of purpose a lot of war games do. It, it really kind of feels like you're reaching, trying to get some kind of advantage, but never, it's always slipping away from you. Wallenstein, which is barely historical at all, but is a fun game, especially with that tower throwing stuff in it. For all the problems the tower has, it's this cute mechanic. Uh, you should see the video on that. Puerto Rico looked like a very good game. I played it the one time solitaire, even though some people make fun of playing it solitaire. I was listening to uh, what Marco on the uh, on his triple podcast with Undead Viking and uh, Joel, and you know, was the thing he made fun of was doing Puerto Rico solitaire. Well, I did it solitaire. I thought it was kind of fun that way. Um, I can definitely see where that's a very, very attractive game to, to other people. I've been told I should get San Juan, and unfortunately I have the expansion for it, but not the game itself. So I'm get kind of an eye out for it to see. All right, I think that's good enough for the Renaissance period. And we still got a lot of cards to go through. So this may take more than one night's work.